In this exercise, we're going to use the IDMAX circuit designer to build a Class A circuit. So the first thing I want to do is start with a DCAI card. What that does, that splits the IDMAC channel into a feed and return, both starting with 29 volts, that will feed out to field wiring. And I would just throw in field devices. I'll make that. Okay, so we've got a couple devices. I'll copy those a few times. Six or seven sets of devices. And you'll notice they're all in a direct line. We can't tap when we're looking at Class A uh, devices or Class A channel. So at the end, to complete the circuit, I would need to put a Class A return in. Now, bear in mind, these devices are all 50 feet away from each other, in my example. My Class A return, I don't think 50 feet is going to get us back to the panel, so let's say this is 300 feet. Okay, this is my circuit. I'll open up this column so you can see the voltages. If you'll double tap on the line there, it opens it up, and I started with 29 volts from the one side, and as I got further away from the panel, the voltage decreased. The Class A return starts from the other way and starts at 29 volts, and it feeds, it drops down the further I get away from the panel. If I get a break in the wire between you know, this device and this one, everything will still work. You'll get a Class A communication trouble, but all the devices are functional. So this is a simple Class A. Again, no T-tapping, straight line, just like we were doing if we are doing conventional devices. The difference is you have 29 volts instead of 24 is your starting point. So there are some exotic things you can do with these. Let's look at a class A, B mix. So in this scenario, I'm gonna take a three-story building. I'm going to run a class A riser up from the first floor to the second floor terminal cabinet to the third floor terminal cabinet, and then a class A return down. No devices on there yet. That is a class A loop up and down. But at the floor levels, I'm going to run class B devices there. And the only thing I should make sure and do is throw an isolator in as the very first device on each of the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor, and tap those off so you have a class B loop that's tapped off that class A riser. And if I get a short circuit anywhere on the first floor, the, the isolator will shut off the field wiring and I won't damage or jeopardize the rest of the loop. So how do I do that? I First thing I start with is a DCAI like we did previously. And my first device is going to be a terminal cabinet for the first floor. And it's direct connected to the DCAI. The next lines you see are my field of wires. We're, we're going to come back to that. But let's go to the second floor terminal cabinet, FATC terminal cabinet. And I'm telling it, TC, I, I want these sheet to scan up the page and find the next terminal cabinet above me, which is here. So I put some alphas in here. So what this does, it gives me, helps me a little bit over in this right-hand column. This TC terminal cabinet ties to the terminal cabinet on the first floor, which is up here. I do the same thing with the third floor terminal cabinet. Third floor FATC ties to the second floor FATC because I said TC here. And then finally, the class A return, which is at the third floor at the end, it ties to this TC above it. So you can see these levels. The far left level is the class A loop. This, 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 this line and the class A return are all part of that class A loop. The actual devices on the floors are tapped out we threw an isolator module in very first thing with the right arrow to tap it. Then all the devices below there are either straight line to it or even, I even threw a tap in the middle to show that now I'm out in the class B section, I can tap as many times as I want in that class B. A short circuit anywhere on this in these devices will get stopped at this isolator module and it won't affect the rest of the building. 
29 volts coming on the class A return, decreasing. 29 volts from the class A out starts at the panel and decreases the further you get away from there. So my volts are good. What do my amps look like? If I open the info panel, I see that I've used 2.57 amps of my three. So I'm getting kind of near the end of the of the uh, power availability. So it does show it in yellow, to, but I'm still within parameters. So I've used only 33 devices on this 127 point channel, but I'm out of amps. Can I throw a repeater in here? You can if you do it in the proper uh, proper method. So I've got another exercise here. We're going to throw three more floors onto this. It's just like the one we just looked at. Instead of being a three story, it's a six story. Well, where's my power for the fourth, fifth, and sixth floor going to come from? We're going to throw a repeater in. First three floors are just as we did previously. DCAI with thermo cabinet on the first, on the second, and on the third floor. When I get up to the fourth floor, I'm going to throw another thermo cabinet. And again, it's tied to the TC down the floor below. Then I'm going to put a repeater in here. And I throw a repeater, red or platinum, it doesn't matter. But the, what matters is what mode is it running in. Class B wouldn't work for me. Class A isn't really this mode, extended mode is what we're looking for. What that does, that sends, that puts you in the middle of the class A loop, and we're going to send power up, up to the next floor and down to the floor below as part of this class A loop. So I put a repeater mode. I say tie to the terminal cabin above me. I could have also just put a straight line in here because it is the next line up. But for continuity, I'm doing everything as tied to the terminal cabinet above. When I get up to the next floor, here's the fifth floor FATC terminal cabinet. If I use the TC terminology like I've done on others, what it would do, it would connect this terminal cabinet, it would bypass the repeater and it would go on the other side to the next to the uh, fourth floor terminal cabinet. I don't want to do that. I want this to be in series with this repeater. So I say scan up the page and put it to the closest repeater, which means here. Thermal cabinet on this floor ties to the repeater in the fourth floor data room. And then, then when I get up to the sixth floor, I'm back to the same way I was doing it previously. I say tie this to the thermal cabinet above, which is the or below, which is the physically below on the next floor down, but above on the on the page. Okay, and then finally, the class A return ties to the next thermal cabinet. So this line over here, far left. Before we do any tapping out, DCAI to terminal cabinet one, to terminal cabinet two, terminal cabinet three, to four, a repeater in series in extended mode, to the fifth floor terminal cabinet, to the sixth floor terminal cabinet, to the cat class A return. My field wiring is done just like we did on previous pages. We started with an ISO module, we tapped it out. So it's a tap off of that terminal cabinet all the field wiring devices are there. When I come over to look at the voltages, we start at 29 volts from the top. We work our way down. Same thing over on this side, 29 volts on the other side, down the first floor, working our way. It goes up to the top and works its way down from the top down. What does this look like on our circuit drawing? So I'm going to say, let's look at a vertical riser so it looks like the building. It's been copied to my clipboard. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and take a look at it. Branch circuit, the ID NAC is there. We start with a DCAI. The first floor terminal cabinet is here with the field devices via an ISO module tapped out for the floor. This is class B wiring. Okay with a little tap in the middle for a couple uh, shoot off devices. My terminal count on the first floor goes 10 feet up to the second floor terminal cabinet. And it has the same arrangement. The field devices via an ISO field are on the second floor. We go up to the third floor, 10 feet to a terminal cabinet, field devices. And now we're going to see one thing different. We go from the third floor up to the fourth floor, 
terminal cabinet. And then there's a repeater in series. And the four floor devices tap off of that. And on uh, the other side of the repeater, the extended mode, we shoot out of there and we go up to the fifth floor and the sixth floor. And finally, at the end of the sixth floor, at the very top of the building, we bring a class A return. We, you know, we might shoot over to a, uh, another stairwell or protected chase, come back down to the panel, and now we have a class A six-story run with a repeater in the middle to boost the power that feeds a bunch of class B isolated circuits on the floors. This functionality could never be done in our previous tools, so this gives you an idea of just how versatile the ID NAC platform is. So thank you and have a good day. I hope this helped.